Is Charles Oliveira secretly and quietly becoming the most interesting champion in the UFC? Like, is that happening right in front of us? Charles Oliveira came out. We discussed this, but he talked about he would like to take on Volkanovski. He would like to take on Kamar Usman as long as it's for their belt. I don't want to go to that division. I don't want to go be a contender. I don't want to change weight classes. I don't want to give my belt away, but I would like an opportunity to do the champ champ business and I'll go up or down. Only guarantee I need it's for the belt. Okay. That's simple. That wasn't the entire point of the interview that he did. It's just what I found to be most interesting. And other people were with me. The elbows and the manias of the world. I mean, th this was a headline of everything that he said. That was the headline. And it is, it, it, it's very catchy. But then you've got a Charles Oliveira who seems to do everything right, lives in the favela where he came from, brings money and food and clothing back to his neighbors, never gets in trouble. You know, that, now he's talking about he can't see very well, right? You have a champion who says, I see three. When I'm out there fighting, I see three. Now, there was an interesting thing that happened, guys. You probably missed this. After Charles Oliveira's last fight, so right after he gets done with Poirier, He's leaving the cage to go to the back and he's, you know, kind of saying hello to the fans and having that moment. And one of the fans, for reasons unknown, reaches up and steals his glasses. And if you would have seen the look on Charles's face, he stopped what he was doing. He pointed, he started yelling, he got his glasses back. But it was just a sign of a man who was desperate, who needed his glasses. And if you do take a look, they these great big Coke bottle glasses. So when he says he's seeing three of everything, I mean, it is just very interesting to me because now all of a sudden you've got a guy that's dealing with with challenges, but he's never used it to complain. In fact, the story that I just told you was never even meant to be caught. He's never said, like, look at me, I'm going out there with a challenge anyway. He just, this, just the reality of the situation, and off he goes. And it just seems as though on accident, Charles Oliveira might be the one real good guy. And I bring that up to good guys to bad guys, because when I was coming through and I went on the other end of the pool, I went there strategically speaking because I realized the competition for the good guy role was being fought for by absolutely everybody in every division of both genders in every weight class. And I realized that I can go swim down here and be the greatest heel in the sport because I'm the only one down there. Now, I bring that to you because why I favor the black hat role. I don't favor it just because it's more fun, I favor it from a marketing standpoint. But now we have everybody trying to swim down there. Everybody's trying to come in with the quips. Everybody's trying to be a little bit meaner and a little bit nastier than the guy that comes before them. Everyone's trying to, to wear an outfit or a suit or a hat or a piece of jewelry that distinguishes them and separates. And they're all getting very redundant. It's getting a little bit dull, but more than anything, they're all starting to swim to the end of the pool that I prefer, which does leave an opportunity for the guy wearing the white hat. That has to be done. Every story's got to have a good guy, but it's got to have a bad guy. And I only bring that to you because I don't know of any other champion that, that, that is really going for that role. And not to mention, when I say the guys go for it, it's generally an act and we see through it. We don't really need you to come out here and pray over a Bible if you're secretly a scumbag. Just be who you are. It appears that Charles is doing that, but Charles slowly, I would even argue on accident, I don't think it's his goal at all, is showing us he's a pretty damn good guy. Charles Oliveira is secretly a dirty competitor. I liked that about him. When he said, I will go up or I will go down, I will do either. You bring the belt. I don't need anything else. I need a shot for an opportunity. That meant something to me. The guys that are out there fighting just for money or the guys that are fighting for fame, and they have the right to do that. But I have the right as a fan too, and that's not the ones that I gravitate towards. I gravitate towards the guy who's there because he wants to compete. He looks at this as a competition. The numbers matter. The opportunities matter. Getting your recognition matters. That's what he's hungry for. That's the guy that I'm getting behind. And I'm starting to see that with Charles. Charles used to drive me crazy, but he was driving me crazy for all of the same reasons that I just laid out that I'm now telling you I'm finding endearing. I'm just wondering if you guys are doing the same thing. Is Charles Oliveira starting to win you over? And if so, why? And once you identify that, which will probably be close to something that I just said, I think that we're all kind of feeling the same thing. Ask yourself one more question, which is how come that didn't work three years ago? And the year before that and the year before that, how come what is different now? 
You might not just learn something about Charles Oliveira if you ask yourself those questions. You might learn something about yourself.